Some measures are what they call semi-additive. And that is when you have a value that is additive, but it's across dimensions other than time. For example, it could be an inventory balance or an accounts balance where there's actually skips in time due to public holidays, due to weekends, which means that you get blanks in your data because nothing occurred on that particular date and so you don't have a contiguous value over time. What I'd like to do is have a look at our fact product inventory table. So I'm clicking this table here and I'm going to go to data view. Now when I'm in data view and I'm in this particular table, I can see that there's a lot of blanks and that is because they were weekends or public holidays. And so on certain dates like, uh, well, certain dates, we don't have data. So how does this translate and appear in our reports? I'm going to go back to report view. What I'd like to do is make a duplicate of page three. So right click, duplicate page, and this is the fourth page of my report, so I'll simply call it page four. Now, in this matrix here, I would like to remove um, any values that you've got other than total sales. I'm going to close that off. I think also I'd like to remove the fiscal quarter. So I've just got month, year, and total sales. Now, I'd like to do a new measure that works out the product inventory. In fact, I'm thinking I'll get rid of total sales as well. So we've just got month and year. If I right click product inventory, I can create a new measure and I'll literally call it product inventory equals and I just want to sum the units balance which you'll find in the product inventory query. So if I close the bracket and press enter, I've made my measure and let's add the measure to our matrix. And so there I can say my inventory balance, my units balance, my inventory level at any particular point in time. But I've got some blanks here, which must mean that they were opening um, product inventory balance. Okay. Now, these figures I'm looking at, they are a sum of the units balance. So that is the total inventory at that point in time. What I'd like to do now is actually just see a closing balance at the end of each month. So I'm going to right click product inventory and create a new measure and ask for closing balance. And it's just based on the last date in a given month. Equals calculate Calculate the product inventory. Let me just do square brackets so I can get that new measure. That's our new measure we've just created earlier. But it has to be using the function last date because I want to know the product inventory as of the last date according to my date lookup, which is dim date date. Close the bracket for, for the last date. Close the bracket for calculate. So when I press enter, what I'm now getting is a closing balance. Um, so I'm going to just add that to my matrix. I'm getting closing balance as of the last date for each month. Now I don't have a figure for some of my months. Like I don't have a figure for March here and I don't have a figure for June here. And the reason for that will be that the last date in my date query there won't be a product inventory for that last date of that month because it was a weekend or a public holiday and so we didn't do an inventory balance. So the last date is actually not giving me, it's giving me gaps in my data and I don't want to see those gaps. I actually want it to return what the closing balance was at the end of that month, even if the end of that month was a weekend and we don't have a figure for that exact date. So instead of using last date, what we would use is last non-blank. And so I'm going to create another new measure. Right-click product inventory, new measure. Let's call this one closing balance non-blank. 
equals calculate the product inventory comma last non-blank date oops there close the last non-blank close the calculate so that's going to show me the product inventory for the last non-blank date in that month and so if I now add this value oops why have I got an error calculate the non-blank last non-date excuse me I take that out till date date close round brackets and another close round bracket I need to put in here that that last non-blank function needs two arguments that is the date and it needs comma the product inventory enter okay and then add that to our matrix and let's compare I might actually even bring up my visualizations search for format and font global font size take that down to maybe 14 or 13 is fine just so you can see better so this particular um, measure that we created and I'll just stretch this so you can see better last date this was just using the last date and there wasn't a date there wasn't a product inventory figure for the last date in that query for March, June, August and November but because we then turned around and used last non-blank there now is a product inventory figure it can calculate for the last non-blank date give me the product inventory and that's what that's showing there and I think that's actually a better um, approach than the closing balance last date because of the fact that we've got semi-additive data so now and as well as there being a last non-blank and a last date there is also a first date and a first non-blank if you wanted an opening balance instead of a closing balance so what I might do is turn off the closing balance last date because I don't want that one and I might actually edit this to just say closing balance and now let's have a look at first date and first closing balance so I'm going to right click product inventory and create a new measure I'm going to call this one opening balance using first date and see if I get any blanks in my data because the first date of a month is a weekend or a public holiday calculate the product inventory comma and give it to me for give me the product inventory for the first date um, listed dim dim date date close bracket close bracket and so here is my measure opening balance first date and I add that and again if I didn't have gaps in my data that would be fine but I do I the first date of October must be a weekend the first date of January for 20, 2006 must have been a weekend so I've got semi-additive data it's not contiguous based on time so I'm going to go and use that first non-blank approach to create my opening balance so I right click product inventory new measure I'm going to choose um, opening balance equals calculate the product inventory comma where the first non-blank based on the dim date date column uh, product inventory close close so I want to show the first non-blank date product inventory figure for each month in each year so press enter and I'm going to grab this opening balance and add it 
to my matrix. And so there I end up with a figure for those months where the first date in that month was a weekend. I'm going to take off this particular measure and just show those values there. So I now have an opening balance and a close balance using the last non-blank and the first non-blank functions for each month. Now there is actually an opening balance um, function, opening balance month function. And so I want to demonstrate that and make you aware of that. I'm actually going to get rid of these two slices, delete that, delete that. And um, what I would like to do is right click the, fact, the product inventory table and create a new measure. And I'm going to call it opening balance month equals and show you the opening balance month. There's a quarter, there's a year, but we're going for the month. And I want product inventory, comma, and for the date. Close the bracket and enter. I'll now actually add that to my matrix and so you can see that we've got the opening balance month function being applied to our matrix. Again it's non-additive but I just wanted you to know that that's a function. A function that presents or returns a value that represents the product inventory at the first date of that month. But again you may end up with this situation where you end up with blanks. And really I also want to show you a function called parallel period which returns a value for a period that's parallel but it will go backwards or forward by a certain interval. So you could go backwards a certain month or forward a certain month. So let's say we want the opening balance again done another way. The opening balance using the last non-blank which would theoretically give us the closing balance but because we want a parallel period it'll go back one day. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to right click product inventory and create a new measure. I'm going to call it opening balance uh, by month or month non-blank equals I'll go shift enter just to clarify calculate the product inventory. All right, comma. Now, if I go shift enter, I'm just going to explain that this actually filters part of the calculation and that I'm after, I want the last non blank value for a parallel period and that parallel period is from the dim date date comma minus one day well actually month because I'll go comma month minus one month close bracket and I'm after the expression product inventory close the last non-blank, close the calculate. So I'm effectively asking for the last non-blank product inventory figure. But because this is an opening balance, I'll go minus one, so it goes back a month, which means that this is the closing balance for the previous month, which is effectively the opening balance for this month, the current month. And so it's an example of parallel period and enter and then I'll add that particular figure to my matrix. So the closing balance for the previous period becomes the opening balance for the next period because we use the parallel period minus one month function. So some really strong sort of time intelligence functions and, semi, and working with semi-additive data.